An awful lot has been written uh, in the last hundred years uh, in Christian theology in general, Roman Catholic theology in, in particular, about the pitfalls of modernity. Uh, that, 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 that aspect of our world that, that began uh, really in, in late medieval times uh, and, and grew and matured during the, the Renaissance and maybe kind of had its peak uh, in, in, in Europe in the 18th century, European philosophy especially in, in, in the 18th century, uh, and that has affected us deeply. Uh, three very important Roman Catholic philosophies that uh, have certainly affected me are, are those of Charles Taylor, uh, Alistair McIntyre, and Louis Dupre, and they in particular have pointed out many of the pitfalls of, of modernity that I think many of us are aware of. On the one hand, a profound dualism uh, coming from uh, Rene Descartes, uh, whose legacy was the objectification of nature, which, which really allowed modern science to develop uh, as it, it had. Uh, that has certain, uh, certainly bifurcated uh, the human being and, and our understandings of ourselves in, in, in the modern period. Uh, uh, so that, that dualism on the one hand, uh, uh, an individualism that was, was very part and parcel uh, with the Renaissance where uh, we're so concerned about our, ourselves and our own kind of inner integrity we gradually lose sight of the importance of our life in common, our societal life, and, and the common good. I think another deleterious effect of the development of, of, of modernity. Certainly the rise of, of modern um, secularism, uh, especially in, in one of its major results that, that moderns have lost what Charles Taylor calls the transformative uh, perspective uh, in in, in pre-modern times, human beings were meant for something higher than the ordinary lives uh, that 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 we live. Uh, and then in the Reformation, uh, when the reformers kind of did away with with religious life and that striving toward supernatural perfection, uh, we became content uh, kind of with our ordinary lives in the world and that's a, a, again I think a legacy of modernity and modern secularism that uh, has been very difficult uh, for us. And, and maybe finally uh, a kind of pervading uh, voluntarism in modernity uh, that was the cause uh, in, in late medieval times of the loss of final causality, of recognition of final causality in the world, of the ends to which we are ordered, a loss of formal causality, of intelligibility uh, in our world, and, and a loss certainly of some of the metaphysical aspects of, of efficient causality. And so again, many, many philosophers uh, have, have just rehearsed uh, all of kind of the bad things that have occurred during the modern uh, period that have affected uh, especially modern Western uh, society today in ways that seem to be very unchristian and, and challenging for us. But what I think is most interesting is, uh, especially those three philosophers that, that I mentioned, Charles Taylor, Alistair McIntyre, Louis Dupre, also point to the flip side of that. Uh, that we shouldn't just, just despair because along with the, the, the unfortunate aspects of modernity, modernity has given us some things that are, are, are crucially important. And, and maybe as I mentioned before, uh, kind of negative aspects of, of modernity, uh, we have to focus on four positive ones also. So certainly I think modernity has given us a lively sense of the dignity of the individual and especially of the conscience of the individual. It's given us a lively sense of, of, of the necessity for freedom of conscience. And it's done that, especially in the realm of religious freedom, religious liberty. Uh, one of the fruits of that is the separation of church and state, 
which find the American Constitution and now pretty much pervades uh, Western culture. We see that also in the desacralization of government, no more divine right of kings. Government, uh, governments are answerable to their people, not only uh, to God. Charles Taylor says in, in particular, that that notion of, of, of freedom of conscience and religious liberty could not have arisen in traditional Christianity. That uh, was, was very culturally isolated, was very non-pluralistic, and was very bound up with the state and, and with government. That, and with government. That, that somehow that awareness of the dignity of the individual, individual conscience, of especially of religious liberty, is a peculiarly modern notion, and it's one that is vital to Christianity. And the Second Vatican Council recognized that in a very positive, very forceful uh, way. I think secondly, uh, kind of going along with that, that, that modernity has given us a, a lively, lively awareness of, of the importance of universal human rights and political rights uh, that was unknown uh, in, in the pre-modern period. Uh, it also privileges, as, as never before in human society, the values of freedom and democracy. And uh, I think, again, Taylor and Dupre especially make the point those notions would not have spontaneously arisen in traditional Christianity. There's a sense in which these notions that are very crucial now to Christianity, universal human and political rights, we get from modernity. It's a two-edged sword, uh, in a sense. I think also uh, one of the achievements of modernity has been giving us a more lively awareness of the importance of everyday life. One of the problems in the Christian tradition was that there were always streams of it. Uh, there were always uh, pockets of piety, you might say, that denigrated the world, uh, that were trying to escape the world. The only world that counted was the world to come. It was the world of heaven. And we almost have to do everything we can to escape ordinary, mundane, natural life in the world as it is in order to get to that better life. We have to escape this world if we're going to live uh, in, in, in the better world. And again, we recognize uh, today certainly that's a profoundly unchristian notion. Uh, we're created first and foremost for this world. We live our lives in this world. That life is crowned. Uh, in the world to come. It's perfected by the world to come. But Christianity in itself always was kind of ambiguous in regard to the value of the world as we know it, the world of lived experience. And modernity has given us a newer and livelier understanding of, of the importance of life in this world, the importance of trying to transform this world as best we can to make it over uh, in, in the image of Christ. And in many ways, that privileging of the importance of everyday life, of putting God, kind of taking God out of heaven for a few minutes and putting God, putting Christ down into normal human life, seeing God in normal human life, is, is an insight that in many ways comes to us from modernity. And again, that it was recognized in, in a very positive, very strong way by the Second Vatican Council. Uh, I think lastly, modernity has been very good at, at, at recognizing and pointing out that there are autonomous grounds, autonomous realms of morality. Uh, and that in contradistinction to, a, again, some trends uh, in the Christian tradition uh, that saw uh, morality as something that primarily came from God, that you couldn't be moral unless you believed in God, that if you were looking for norms in your moral system, those norms only came directly from Revelation. They only came from the mouth of God. You could not live any kind of a good human life, even on the natural level, without somehow explicit reference to God, to God's Revelation, the Ten Commandments. Uh, and modernity, uh, especially I, I, I think in its romantic 
uh, aspects has shown us that, that that might be so, ultimately, certainly. But in the concrete, human nature itself is a moral norm. And, and uh, the life of human beings in the world, human experience, delivers up to us moral normativity, that you don't have to explicitly believe in God or in Christ to live a good moral human life. And again, that is, I think, in, in many ways something that has been very strongly emphasized by modernity in its various aspects and that we ourselves as Christians have, have learned from to, to look at our tradition more deeply and realize, yeah, that's right. It's not just the word of God that is first and foremost the moral norm, but it, it's God's creation. It's what God has given us that is the proximate source of morality in our lives. And that's where, again, the natural law uh, comes in. It's often struck me uh, that we as Christians in the modern world, and I look at myself in, in particular, we, we live with one foot in pre-modernity. We live with one foot in a Christian world uh, that, that began, you know, 2,000 years ago in, in, in Palestine with, with Christ and had a prehistory of a couple thousand years uh, before that uh, with God's relationship with, with, with the Jewish people and that culminated in a sense with a theological synthesis uh, in, in medieval Europe. And, and we live and we have to live very much in that world. But we're also modern people. We live in the modern world. We do modern and now we do postmodern things uh, all the time. How can we do that? Well, I think as, as the church has experienced over the last 60, 70 years, not easily. Uh, there, there's a lot of tension in, in the life of a modern Christian because we do live in two worlds, a pre-modern, deeply rooted Christian world on the one hand, uh, and a modern and now increasingly post-modern, uh, 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 continually more secularized world. And yet, both of those worlds have made us who we are, and we cannot escape either of those worlds. And so again, I come back to that concept of the hermeneutical circle and interpretive circle, where our, our Christianity, our faith, has to interpret our modern experiences, has in many ways to critique our modern uh, experience, throw the light of the gospel on our modern experiences. But as I've just been, been saying in, in my own way, our modern experiences, the lenses of modernity and postmodernity, also need to shed light on our Christianity and our Christian concepts because they have a lot to teach us. Uh, they have a lot to teach us about our Christian past and the possibilities of our Christian future. So the life of a, a Christian today is, is a tension fill life, but it, it needs to be so. And it's not necessarily an evil tension or a bad tension. It can be or it should be a, a creative tension if we allow our, our Christianity first and foremost to in, interpret and shed light on our experience as modern people, but also if we allow our experiences as modern people to shed light on our Christianity.